Today here I am in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is a city I've been to many times. It's right on uh, I-95, which is on the eastern side of the United States interstate. It goes right down, and um, I've usually just stayed on the outskirts because I've been traveling to other cities. But today I'm doing a few things in Fayetteville. So I'm actually right in the city for once, and it's a beautiful little town. And uh, like every town, like every city, it's got its crime and uh, some real this this particular one that I'm talking about today is one of the most upsetting ones you'll hear I think um, it reminds me somewhat of the Jessica Lunsford case that I covered down in Florida the little girl that was kidnapped from her mobile home there and also when it comes to parents that are supposed to protect their children and when they don't do that job this story magnifies that to a level it is what this mother did it's so horrific and I'm talking about Shania Davis little Shania Davis that's who this story is about and what happened to her is one of the most horrific things you'll hear we're going to visit her grave I'm also going to show you uh, the area where she was taken from in this video and yeah let's get into it it is a rainy rainy day right now it is Oof coming down but I don't melt it's fine and we're at Fayetteville Memorial Cemetery Shania Davis would be 20 years old right now if she was still alive 20 years old but unfortunately her mother traded her to pay off a $200 drug debt traded her. So Mario Andret McNeil, he's the perpetrator of this crime. I should mention Shania was five years old. Five. He was dating the sister of Antoinette Davis, who's the mother of little Shania. He knew where Shania lived. It was a mobile home. Not too far from here, actually. He also knew how to get into the mobile home when it was locked. He lived in a different house with the mother of his child. Apparently one night he was up all night, drinking, taking cocaine, and texting women whose number numbers were in his phone. This included Brenda, the sister of Antoinette. About 3 a.m., he went to Sleepy Hollow Drive to visit a woman. But that woman was asleep. So he tried to see Brenda Davis. 
Now, Antoinette Davis, she was living with her sister Brenda. Brenda and her boyfriend woke up about 5.30 and they thought they heard someone open their bedroom door. At 6 a.m., Antoinette went into the bedroom, woke them to report that Shania was missing. Antoinette went outside to look for Shania. While she was outside, Antoinette's son told Brenda Davis that McNeil had been in the home. Now, Brenda said Antoinette was reluctant to call the police, but finally did at 6.52 a.m. The Fayetteville Police Department commenced a search and issued an Amber Alert. All the while at this time, McNeil checked into a hotel in a nearby town shortly after 6 a.m. There's security video showing that he had Shania and he brought it to his room. He left the hotel carrying Shania at about 7.35 a.m. I just saw a grave to the left of me. It's very sad, 14 years old. Horrific, sad. So a hotel employee saw him leave and thought something looked amiss. The next day, hotel employees recognized Shania in the Amber Alerts and contacted law enforcement. The police interviewed Antoinette Davis the day Shania disappeared and three more times in the days that followed. At first, she said she had no idea what happened to Shania, hadn't a clue. Later, she falsely accused her boyfriend and this led to his arrest. He was later freed. Finally, the police determined that McNeil, Muriel McNeil, was the prime suspect and tracked him down. And then, Antoinette Davis confessed that she owed McNeil $200 and he wanted to be paid in either money or sex. So, she gave him Shania to take to a hotel room. And I quote her when I say this. She said to a detective, all he was supposed to do was have sex with her. She also slightly changed her story later and said that this guy McNeil, Mario McNeil, was taking Shania to have sex with another man. She was arrested, but Shania was still missing. Now, at McNeil's uh, court ruling, he wasn't sure exactly where he left Shania. His lawyers told the police it was along North Carolina Route 87 between Spring Lake and Sanford. Sanford, I believe, was the town that he took her to where the hotel was. Near some green portable toilets in an area where hunters field dress their deer. The next day, a massive search of that location went about. Police officers from the Virgin Islands who were visiting North Carolina for dog handling training, one of these officers, they found Shania's body under a log. It was off Walker Road, discarded. Now this guy, McNeil, he almost got what he, he I don't, well, what does he deserve? Five years old? What he did to her in that hotel room and then what he did to her afterward? He was sentenced to death in May of 2013. Convictions of murder, kidnapping, human trafficking, sexual servitude I'm reading these this is a lengthy list taking indecent liberties with a minor and sex offense of a child by an adult offender Antoinette Davis she was pregnant when she was arrested that child was put into foster care she was sentenced to at least 17 and a half years up to a maximum of 21 years and 9 months she's expected to be released in May of 2027 17 and a half years for selling your five-year-old. Hmm. Here she is. And I should say that I drove by the grave a moment ago, like about 10 minutes ago. You can see there's water. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. But same with the one beside. The water kind of ruins the look. It's just water. It'll dry up. And it's a beautiful picture. The local county Department of Social Services was criticized about its level of cooperation with law enforcement and it was investigated. 
they did um, the Department of Health and Human Services released a five page report. I'll just summarize it about what happened. Law enforcement had conducted a raid on the home where Shania lived just a few months before her murder and they did not alert social workers about the children. Cumberland County school officials had concerns about Shania's family around that time but failed to tell the Department of Social Services until it was too late. Child protection personnel had held discussions with law enforcement agencies about the responsibility to report child abuse or neglect but the message may not have been reaching law enforcement law law officers sorry who work in narcotics or undercover in 2013 and 2017 social services down this year said that the agency established new protocols for working with law enforcement and made other changes in response to the case of shania nicole davis sold for two hundred dollars but the mother says it was it was only for sex. It was just supposed to be for sex. What? That's your excuse? You didn't know that she was going to be murdered? That doesn't make a difference. She should have life in prison as well. Or worse. see the rain starting to dry up. And it looks like people come out here quite a bit for little Shania. Story makes you think of other terrible mothers. Susan Smith, Casey Anthony, who is free. is one of the worst I've heard. She would be turning 20 this year. Could be a couple of other children in this area right here. Um, yeah, some newer graves as well. Right near Shania. God's angel called home. And that's my story about little Shania. Right there. You can see right over my shoulders. Rest in peace, Shania, and um, I hope the two perpetrators of this get what's coming to them. Really do. This is uh, one, of the, one of the worst things I've ever heard. Sold $200. A drug debt. You give your five year old. I know what you're thinking the same thing I am. It's it's hard even putting the words, right? Two hundred dollars. Sell your daughter. How much did you really care about her in the first place? How much? Thanks for watching everybody. Rest in peace, Shania. Love you all, peace.